overview of a, a project where I got to fly LIDAR myself. So this is in Australia. This is a small aircraft and one of the parts is a LIDAR unit. And um, we're flying above Adelaide in the hills and we're doing a little LIDAR survey. And here you see kind of the flight plan that is uh, set up. In the center is the house of Jörg Hacker, the guy who is operating this lab. And we're flying east-west and north-south strips over the house. So in order to do that, the plane has to fly these pretzel movements uh, because you can't really turn on a dime. And uh, there you see the house that is in the center. And once we come back, um, you may have noticed the house had uh, solar panels on the top. Um, once we come back, we put that solar energy to some good use and did some lighter processing. So first thing we did, last boundary. It's one of the tools and it very quickly can generate just a, a boundary around the points. An output, for example, KML format. Then you can already send to your friends uh, you know, a little KML file and say, we have LIDAR here, without sending the many gigabytes of LIDAR information. Uh, it's also uh, just a sanity check, uh, or if you, yeah, if you want to share with colleagues where you did the collection, or back to home base. Uh, the next thing is last to them. Last to them is a tool that takes LIDAR and creates rasters. And here we used it to create a very simple hill shade raster. And we did that per strip. For every strip, we create a simple raster with 2.5 meter, meter spacing, just to do a quick sanity check. Uh, it's nice to reference it in Google Earth. And this way, you can, for example, see that the roads align with the Google Earth imagery. That's not something I would call a, you know, a, a real quality check, but it's more like a sanity check. Uh, that you can do very quickly even right after acquiring the data and you see things like this here uh, that's not nice there's a there's a gap in the coverage because probably i was leaning out of the window trying to spot a kangaroo that was my first time in australia uh, there's a tool for this actually to uh, do that more systematically it's called last overlap and this now takes all the flight lines here before i only showed you this was only the east west oops the east west strips and this tool now takes the east-west and the north-south strips and maps uh, to a color how many times every point was covered by a flight line. So you see this was covered by once, this was covered twice, Ye yellow is three times, orange four times, and red is five times. And you see that the north-south strips didn't cover that part either completely. And if that happens in the production, that's bad um, because now you have to go back and get these points uh, and this is very expensive um, if you receive data this tool lets you quality check if you for coverage if you got what you asked for the same tool also creates this kind of raster which does a difference between the flight lines now um, Chris explained before you have all these sensors, you know, IMU and GPS and base station uh, and then the range scanning on the laser system. Before you get the XYZ points, there's a lot of mass uh, mathematics going on. There's a lot of um, sources of errors uh, that can accumulate and sometimes the errors are completely crazy. Like a, a flight strip ends up standing like this in the terrain and things like this. This tool finds that very quickly uh, because it looks how do these flight lines fit together? And it basically colors the differences between flight lines. Uh, red and blue is bad, white is good. And how bad or how, how bad red and blue is can be specified with a parameter. Um, in this case, it's completely bad. This is complete garbage because we said the parameter should be 2.5 meters. That means red means uh, there's a difference of 2.5 meters or more. Uh, that's because we messed with the IMU on purpose in order to get me some data to maybe write a program that's called uh, last align or something like this someday. But that's really hard math. math. So I haven't done that yet. Um, that's another tool, last grid. It makes you can quickly make density grids like this. Um, the holy grail uh, is last ground. Uh, it is finding that ground point among your many points. And that's what everybody does, no matter what your end application will be. Pretty much every workflow needs to find the ground points. 
so you see uh, the up the strip that's uh, above the other one has the ground points uh, classified and only triangulates the ground points into a raster and the one on the bottom uses the last returns so you see clearly the last returns are not the ground returns only in open areas and even there not all the time because there could be a bird flying um, well, no, a bird is a bad example for a last return, unless you have a... Oh, there could be a dragon flying, right, you know, <laughs> then you totally cover the... Because there could be a car parked, yeah, like this. Um, and once you have the ground returns, then you can run last hide, last classify to cl do some more uh, interesting classification of points here into roofs and into vegetation.